With all the buzz around PCI Express Gen 4 SSDs, are the slower Gen 3 drives still a viable option? Well, Samsung seems to think so, and today we're taking a look at their new SSD 980 drive. Let's do this. Yo, dog, I heard you like RGB, so I put RGB on your RGB. Thanks, dog. But this is my show. Go back to Pimp My Ride. The new NZXT Kraken X63 RGB now with two 140mm RGB fans with an even larger infinity mirror display and new 7th gen Acer Tech pump. And with a six year warranty, you've got nothing to worry about. Get your RGB on. Link in the description to find out more. Isn't that right? So firstly, the name, I think it's a bit weird, SSD 980, but what does the SSD 980 have to say for itself? Well, it's kind of aimed at being more of a mainstream consumer drive that will consequently be compatible with most motherboards. Basically, there's no need to worry about Gen 4 and if your system supports it. At least for the most part, it's simply plug and play. Now, capacity wise, it comes in at 250 gig, 500 gig, and one terabyte sizes, with read speeds of up to 3,500 megabytes a second. Personally, I would have liked to have seen a slightly larger, maybe two terabyte capacity, but I do guess that that's actually gonna be reserved for the 970 EVO Plus. And this helps to, I guess, differentiate the stack ever so slightly. For those not in the know, the drive uses 3-bit MLC VNAND, and while it's not as fast as the likes of SLC, it is faster than TLC, and ultimately comes in a little bit cheaper too. Being a Gen 3 drive, you also won't have to worry about thermal throttling, like you would on a Gen 4 drive. And because of this, there's actually no heatsink on the drive. The bare drive also means it's easier to fit into a motherboard's M.2 slot, as most boards these days do have M.2 shields over kind of, you know, the, the main part of the motherboard. It covers the drive up and does offer a bit of cooling as well. Now, in terms of speeds, Samsung claim read speeds of up to 3,500 megabytes a second, while its write speeds aren't far behind at 3,000 megabytes a second. Again, slightly behind the 970 EVO Plus, and if you do find yourself looking for more speed and PCIe Gen 4 capabilities, you may want to check out the 980 Pro, again from Samsung. But be prepared to pay that premium price for those extra, all important speeds. Trust me, they're not cheap. So most SSDs will have some form of onboard DRAM to deal with block allocation, and that generally bumps the price of the drive up. Well, for the 980, Samsung have gone with an in-house controller and a HMB, or host memory buffer, to get those impressive speeds. To put it simply, this drive is DRAMless, which means less power draw, a simpler controller, and of course, this all helps to keep the cost down. It's also backed by a five-year warranty and a 600 terabyte written endurance. To kind of simplify things, that means you could, in theory, write 328 gigabytes to the drive every single day for five years, and it should, should last. When it comes to performance, we know that you aren't always gonna hit those rated speeds, and there are a lot of kind of factors that come into place. But how close can we actually get to them using a system close to, I guess, what a consumer would actually have? Now, heading over to our synthetic benchmarks, and not only could we reach the same results for random IOPS and sequential read speeds, we were actually able to beat them even in Crystal Disk Mark, if only by a little bit. Now, when it comes to the write speeds, we weren't far off from the advertised speeds and came in, I guess, ever so slightly lower. Now, as we all know, it's great to see the benchmark scores kind of all add up, but that doesn't always equate to that wonderful real world kind of performance that we expect. When it comes to that, one of the easiest and best ways to test it is by transferring a folder to the drive with multiple size files in it, as some drives kind of deal differently with different file types, sizes, and of course, whether it's compressible or incompressible data. For this, we use the latest version of Call of Duty Modern Warfare. We all know how big this game is getting, and it has loads of different files in it to get us the kind of better, I guess, understanding and a better look at real world performance. When transferring the whole folder over, we start off with an average transfer speed of around 1.4 gigabytes a second, with some peaks of actually up to 1.68. Towards the end of the file transfer, it did drop down to between 380 and 400 megabytes a second, with some drops actually as low as 330. Now, this is actually quite impressive, as when we've run the test on other NVMe drives, even some Gen 4 ones, they were getting similar transfer speeds. You will find that Gen 4 drives don't seem to you know, drop quite as low towards the end as we saw with the SSD 980, but we wouldn't expect to get the same performance sustained all of the time. This would simply make the other drives, well, pointless, and in no way would companies be able to charge that extra Gen 4 premium. 
Now, running these tests on an empty drive is one thing, but how does it do when we put some files on it? Well, to find out, we had the drive filled to 25%, 50%, and 75% to find out just what it can handle. Now, at 25 and 50%, we lost about 200 megabytes a second, and at 75%, it was closer to a 300 megabytes a second loss. But how much does that really matter, and would it even really be noticeable? Well, not really, unless you were installing the same thing, say, multiple times. So performance is one thing, but obviously I mentioned that this drive is all about being well-priced, and it isn't all that bad. As for the pricing, the one terabyte model that we tested here today comes with an MSRP of £119.49, which normally is around the same in dollars from what we've seen in the past. Again, if you're looking for something a bit faster and utilizing those lovely Gen 4 speeds, then the 1TB 980 Pro can be had for around $200 or £200. Other options on the market are available at a slightly cheaper price, like the Seagate Q5 drives. But remember, they do use QLC NAND and therefore are just that little bit slower. So really, it's down to kind of what you're after and what your personal preference is. When it all comes down to it, the SSD 980 is a pretty solid drive and the one terabyte capacity should be more than enough for most users. With this drive, you're getting some of the best speeds that PCIe Gen 3 can offer, all at a half decent price. This drive will be perfect as a boot drive with a few of your favorite programs and games on it. With a 600 terabyte write endurance and a five year limited warranty, it seems like a, a pretty great drive for those who are just looking to make that move to NVMe without going kind of too crazy. One of the really nice things is that it doesn't have a heatsink on the drive, so it will fit under a nice M.2 shield without the fear of kind of dismantling the heatsink, something that probably novice users won't exactly be keen on doing. So let me know, have you made the jump to an NVMe drive yet? If so, what drive are you using? Or maybe you're planning to upgrade in the near future. Either way, let us know in the comments below what your thoughts are on this drive and NVMe SSDs in general. I don't know, has, uh, has SATA kind of had its day now? The pricing is just so close. I don't know. Hope you enjoyed this video though. And if you did, you know exactly what to do and I'll see you in the next one. See you later guys. Bye-bye.